ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Today we're celebrating wines for Christmas 2023. I'm Jason. And I'm Trent. <laughs> we're from The Wind Up. Uh, we're here to provide your unfiltered, unapologetically unprofessional journey of wine. And we have a saying here. Our saying is drink, drink more, more, try more, more learn more. more. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Okay, so I'll kick off with thoughts of the week. Um, I've been looking at Christmas and the one thing that I love and also the kids love as well is advent calendars. Yes. And I saw that there's a, actually a, a wine advent calendar, $150. Have you seen it? Oh, uh, there's quite a few out there. I've been interested to try it. Yeah. yeah. So, $150, get 23 bottles. So, um, the kind of half bottles, reds, whites, and then a rosé as well. So, it's looking at it, like, well, 20, 23 bottles, $150, pretty good value. It's something fun to yeah. kind of go through as you kind of get towards Christmas season. So, that was quite interesting. And have some variety. Exactly. exactly. Um, yeah, so I thought that I might, I might try that, but then again, you don't know what it is, but hopefully it's fairly good, but who cares when you're going to Christmas anyway. But then on a serious note, it is the season of giving, Jason. Yes. And I just want to say thank you for all the hard work you put in for this year because this all doesn't happen by magic. You know, I think you do like 90% of the work, kind of get this magic to happen. <laughs> and I've got something for you today. Oh, what the... What are you doing? <laughs> this is all unplanned. What's happening? You got me a Christmas present already. I got you that Christmas present. Jeez, already. So you can open this. it up now if you want. Open it up live on screen. Thank you. You didn't need to. That's all right. And this is a joint effort, man. This, uh, the, the Wind Up podcast doesn't happen without you. And It is something wine related. I am. Whoa, the World Atlas of Wine 8th Edition. Hopefully you can see that on the screen there. Thank you, mate. You didn't need to get me anything. I, I really appreciate that. That's Thank right. you. Thank you. And so I'm assuming this has all of the different grape varieties. And the wine regions as well. So I kind of talked to this before when I was looking through Burgundy. Yeah. Then I thought, hang on, this would be a good one to kind of go through. Because I hold on. Uh, I thought it would be quite useful as you're going to go through the different wine regions, understand the different sub, um, the terrains as well, the terroirs, and yeah, I think it'd be a good kind of reference guide to kind of go through. Far out. Thank you. You, yeah. you really <laughs> didn't have to, and it's a partnership. It's definitely 50-50 between you and I, so thank you. And and so, I've got a, uh, I left my gift at home. <laughs> <laughs> it's on lay by. I feel really bad. It's thank right. you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate that. And that was, that was the surprise. And, uh, Actually, it might be a good segue to my thoughts of yeah. the week because I was trying to think of Christmas ideas to get you. <laughs> and so, I, I thought I'd look at the different options out there to yeah. see, is this Christmas idea good or bad for the wine lover? Yes or no? Yeah. So, I've got a few things that I've printed out and I wanted to share and I want you to give it a yes or a no if you would like it as your Christmas gift. Yeah, sure. As a wine enthusiast. So, the first one that I have here is some Australian wine region tea towels <laughs> for about 30 bucks. Yeah. All right? Okay. So, the example, you've got, you've got Geelong, yeah. you've got Margaret River, That's all cool. of the different wines. The benefits of this is you know where, you know about the region. Yeah. And if you have a spill, you can wipe it up. Yeah. What do you think? Is that a yes or a no as a That's Christmas a maybe. gift? That's a maybe. That's a maybe. That's a maybe. <laughs> wow. I thought it was a straight no. Okay, okay. Let's try number two. If you want this in Santa's bag, it's a Houdini electric corkscrew, one of T-Pain's favorite gifts. Oh, if it's from T-Pain, it must be not good then. So, that's a no. <laughs> $35, electric corkscrew, it just makes everything easy. Why would you say no? Why not? What about that time where you run out of electricity and you can't open the bottle of wine? This is, I'm pretty sure it's batteries, but okay. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Let's try the next one. This is expensive. 687 Aussie dollars. A Riddell Swan Decanter. What do you think? It's very nice. Nice, but is it worth the money? It's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say no straight away to that one. Uh, are you a maybe on that? No, no? I, I said no, it's a no. It's a no, okay. All right, next one. We've got a Brewmate Wine Stulator gift set. So, this you can get for 115 mm. Aussie bucks. You're traveling around Australia, you're going to the beach, you just want some wine, you might have opened some up earlier and want to keep it going. 
What do you think? Is that a good sell? No, that's that's another no. no. <laughs> You're full of no's. I'm not going to get you anything by the end of this. Uh, let's see what else we got. Let's, oh, this one. How many of these sheets of paper do you have, Joe's? Oh, I've got a few more. Just want to make sure we've got the list right. <laughs> I, I like uh, I like this one here. Uh, let me bring this up. <laughs> All right, you've got to say yes to this. So this is some champagne and <laughs> wine inspired candles. Oh, wow. Um, and, and so if you want your wine smell or just something that references wine, $35 and you can get candles. In that well, you set. said I have to say yes to it. So I'll say yes to it though. Finally, you said yes to something <laughs> and I'm happy it's the $35 one. All right, I got two more. Yeah. And I want to see if, if you'd go for it. These are all from websites referencing yeah. this. So it's a bag of truffle potato chips. No. What? <laughs> $78 for three of no. these bad boys and no. you can pair it with your wine. No, no. Okay, that's a no. This one I thought was interesting. I don't know if you've seen this before. It's called Some Blinders and it's a card game. 55 bucks. Mm -hmm. You, you are have the different grape varieties and uh, you're tasting it and you try and guess which one does that link a to? maybe. It's a maybe. Yeah. Okay, gosh. Okay, have we got any yeses? You got one yes, the one they told me to say yes to, but I'm just getting hungry and thirsty. Yeah. <laughs> why, why, why keep a jello piece of paper? So there you go. <laughs> that was bloody hard. I couldn't find him a gift. He got me one. Thank you for the gift. If anyone's got some good <laughs> wine gifts for Christmas, please share it in the comments below. Obviously, none of these uh, were up there. <laughs> Thanks, Trent. <laughs> cool. Um, so, what have I been drinking? So, uh, recently, I got a, uh, a a collection of Noon wines from the Dremoyne Wine Society. And the one that I had was the Noon Eclipse, the 2020, 2022 Noon Eclipse, which is a 81% Grenache, 14% Shiraz, 5% Graciano, um, very interesting wine, but I did find it to be a bit too heavy on the alcohol, 16%. It's high, uh, 16%, high, high. So, wow. And I definitely felt it as well. Really intense, really big, um, kind of that mix between red and red from the Grenache and the dark fruits from the Shiraz as well. But, yeah, it, it was really, really big. I just needed a good steak to kind of match with it. So um, interesting wine. Uh, maybe something for cellaring if uh, over time. Could maybe, you see the potential? Maybe. Okay. Yeah. All right, perfect. All right, so that's the wine of the week. Let's get into the heart of the content. And for those viewers on YouTube, in front of us, Trent has created a feast. Mm. We've got some glazed ham and we've got a roast chicken, uh, which which represents the turkey yeah. over Christmas. And and here- We've got one thing though, we've got the prawns. That's what we've got. And the prawns, uh, uh, uh. the prawns will have- <laughs> <laughs> right after this episode, I hey, think. Let me ask for the prawns. The pro producers yeah, are producing okay, the okay, prawns. <laughs> well, I love how you just click your fingers and magic happens. <laughs> anyway, keep going. But this is, but this is reminiscent of a typical Christmas lunch or dinner yeah. in Australia, but I'm sure across the world. Classic items: ham, chicken slash turkey, and and prawns. Yeah. Um, and so what we wanted to do today is. Find out what wine best pairs with these classic Christmas dishes. It, it's a tough ask because there's all these different things you tend to have for Christmas. Obviously, you've got the hams, you've got the turkeys, you've got the seafood yeah. as well. Like, how do you kind of do a wine pair for such a diverse range of dishes and products, right? Yeah, you need something very versatile. Look at that, just like magic. And the prawns appear. Thank you. <laughs> and they're still alive. They're jumping. Oh, my it's God. Great. That's how fresh they are. <laughs> that's right. From the, from the fish market this morning. Before we, we dive into the prawns, if, if you think about I Christmas you to there. you, <laughs> you see what I did? <laughs> well, what, 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 what reminds you of Christmas? What's the one thing that you really look forward to or your best memory of Christmas? Anything you're able to share? Um, my best memory of Christmas is probably... Um, everyone getting together at my grandpa's place, having a barbecue, and everyone brings a dish, the ham, the turkey, the pudding, and everything, and just mixing up with all the family and the cousins as well. So yeah. that's that's my fond memory of Christmas. And the Christmas tree as well with the candy canes. They just kind of pick it off and yes. start eating and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. That, that's like Christmas to me is also about family yeah. and 
And I remember the, the most clear Christmas I remember was actually going back to the Philippines and celebrating with my family there. And we had, we had a cast of 50 yeah. Ronit family members all, <laughs> all around. Uh, and it, it was such a good time with food. And I was having a great time. And I was single at the time. Yeah. And, and I was having a great chat with this cheeky babe there. Yeah. And uh, we were getting on like fire. I thought, wow, I've, I've met yeah. my wife. Um, my, my family members brought me to the side after having a chat to her and said, that's your cousin. And um, it didn't really work out. <laughs> so that's my memory of Christmas. Watch out. It's a good time for family. <laughs> you could find that you're going to date your cousin. So try and avoid that. <laughs> um, and so with that, let's dive into the wine. <laughs> Is that a good segue? <laughs> That was a fantastic all segue. Right. It's so, all, so your wife knows that's your second choice? She, she does know now. So, <laughs> so she knows. I could have married my cousin. So, so like you said, it is a challenging task. We've got, we've got ham, we've got poultry, we've got, we've got the seafood. Yeah. And so for this episode, Trent was challenged with trying to choose a wine that pairs with all, and so was I. Yeah. And so we might start with my, my choice, yeah. which was a white and it was a Gruner. It was a Viognier. Sorry, I thought it was a Gruner. <laughs> a it Gruner, was a Viognier. A Gruner Viognier. <laughs> Some, a, a, a new blend that's coming out. <laughs> but but the Viognier, I've I've only had once in my life, yeah. and it was with you on this very podcast. It was a Clonakilla Viognier. I wanted to try more, and when researching something that could be versatile, this popped up. It's a. I'll put it on the screen here. It's a. 2020 Yaring Bird Viognier from Yarra Valley. We, we bought it for $56 from, from Summer Hill. Uh, the theory behind this is that it's floral. It's got stone, fla stone fruit flavors like mm. apricot, and that mm. should meld quite well with the glazed ham. You'd think it works well with turkey and, and chicken as well. And, and, and then also the seasoned, um, the freshness of it all should complement the prawns as Trent starts carving away at that at that chicken chicken slash turkey okay chicken slash turkey we, we need to use the imagination here that looks like a challenging cut though <laughs> i, I want to move these these wines away from you let me move this down that's maybe maybe one of the producers will cut that up it's all right you got it you no, got, I, got it I, I got it i got it okay you, you're you, a pro you, that you, you keep going you keep going and so what we're gonna do is uh check it out with our eyes our nose our nose our eyes and our mouth and give it a taste as this beautiful chicken that that trans cooked up has been been carved through and so if i if i look at it on the eyes uh it, it's quite a regular regular white wine nice straw color quite translucent and clear uh nothing that's standing out as too different from that and then if we try on the nose And, and that stone fruit flavor uh, and scent is really what's coming out. But also, I remember the Clonakilla was yeah. like this as well. The Clonakilla had this floral bouquet. Yeah. And that's also, I, I don't know if that's just a key characteristic of Viognier, but, but that's also what's coming through. As you've, have you hacked through that? Well done. Hacked through that. Let's see. So what do you, Trent's going to have a, a smell. Do you get the floral bouquet? Yeah. And then Stone kind of, fruit? It's kind of a bit of a, uh, a slight sweetness with the fruit as well. Mm. Actually, I, I think when we had the Clonakilla, we were talking about confectionery mm. sweetness. That's, it's, this one's not as sweet. The thing that kind of pops in my mind, I think will go really good with the prawns. Yeah, actually, there's a bit of minerality that I'm getting through this as well. Trent's had a taste. Uh, describe the flavors that you're getting through. Um, this didn't have much of the as much of the kind of acid I was expecting. Um, rounded. Mm. Dry. Um, dry, but I'm just still trying to think about it. I think I need to drink a bit more. Mm. So this is still it still reminds me of the Clonakilla in that the Viognier had this sweet floral bouquet, but actually the flavor profile was quite dry. I like the palate weight to it. Uh, it's got a good medium palate weight, uh, but there's nothing too offensive that's coming out. There, there's nothing there that I'm like, but your face is telling me something else. I'm just trying to think what it is. Look, this is kind of like grass grassiness to it. Yeah, it's kind of kind of like come through as a good thing or a bad thing. Good thing. It's an interesting kind of aroma that's coming through. But just trying to think how that would kind of then pair with everything else. 
I know. You you want to try pairing it now? Here's a bit more roast you chicken slash turkey for you. All right. So we got we got a piece of chicken. We got a piece of uh, ham all with us. Mm-hmm. Are we going to do a live peel of the prawns as well? Is no. That, no prawns. <laughs> just, da- just for show. It's dangerous. All right. Let's go with the chicken first, I think. So, well done on this chicken. God, this looks pretty moist. Quite seasoned. Bit of rosemary. I think. I Great th- scent on the herbs. I think the viognier will actually go all right with it. Mmm. It's a kind of bit more of a kind of medium body around it. But let's see. What would you, what cock screws would you give the chicken out of 10? That chicken's good, but the Trent chicken is always, is always special and moist. Mmm, it does go with the chicken, but there is, I'm trying to work out there's this flavor. The finish of this has a very odd, odd flavor to it that kind of, I'm not enjoying that at the, um, mm. after having the chicken. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think it actually turns the chicken to a bit of the bitterness. The bit, yeah, it's the bitterness that comes, comes through. through when you didn't have that before when you had it by itself. What about with the ham? Because it, it's working with the herbs, I'm assuming. Okay, so the ham glazed. Uh, I can see orange, uh, maple, a bit of maple. So should that that honey sweetness should be coming Rose. through. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> that reminds me of Christmas. That's. <laughs> <laughs> Chucking that between a sandwich. 10 out of 10? <laughs> mm. 10 out of 10 on that. Okay. So we've had a bit of sweetness. The The viognier is quite dry. I don't think it's doing it for me again. No, there's no lifting there. There's, <laughs> there's still, actually on both of them, the finish is still has this really subtle bitterness mm. about it. Yeah. I'm trying to work is. out what the conflict yeah. is, but uh, it wasn't there with the food. So, if we think about a pairing, like on its own, I'd give this wine a seven out of ten. It, it's it's nice, it's enjoyable. Another Viognier to to put into yeah. a, a tasting bucket. But as a pairing, I would give this a five out of ten corkscrews because yeah. it really didn't do anything. No. And and it in detracted. fact, it, yeah, it had a slight bitterness towards the end. Yeah, I agree. I think. Um yeah, it, it, yeah, it just didn't work. Um, it lost some of its the wine for me. The wine kind of lost of that kind of freshness and the complexity around it. Um, yeah. as you kind of had it with the food. Yeah, I think um, it's really the ham. It has that kind of sweetness to it. It just kind of then overwhelmed, and then when they tried to try and balance out, it just created that bitterness around it. Yeah, because it couldn't match. Yeah, I agree. Okay, beyond yeah, maybe don't give that a crack. Let's. Let's move on to the next one. Trent, what did you choose? Um, I chose a Beaujolais. So Beaujolais, like we've Beaujolais. had one of these before. What was the Beaujolais that you picked last time? Oh, I forget, but I remember saying Beaujolais and thinking Bogan straight away. Bo- but Bogan, eh? So, yeah. if I move this up, what is this one, Trent? This is the 2021 Domaine de Bois de Lois. Lois? Lois? Uh, Moulin Event uh, Beaujolais. The reason I picked this one, it's one of the 12 appellations of Beaujolais. So it's actually a crew wine from Beaujolais. Um, it is also from Moulin Avent. It's also nicknamed the Lord of Beaujolais wine. The Lord of Beaujolais. Lord of Beaujolais. Wow, that's significant. Yeah. Um, 255 meters altitude, the soil, granite, limestone, marl, sandstone. Uh, said that this is also a more of a full-bodied one. Um, though it's also would be great with stuffed turkey, but we've got chicken today. Let's see how that goes. Um, the other notes that I got from as well, it's at Christmas, New Year's, or any special occasion, this prestigious Beaujolais crew will add that extra special something as you raise your glass. Yeah, and if it's a crew, it makes it special. And if it's the lord of the Beaujolais, are we saying it's the best of the best? Is that is that what they're saying? I don't know. It depends if you think the Lord is the best of the best or not. It's higher than a Lord. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. The Queen, I don't know. My wife. Uh, My wife's higher. <laughs> yeah, so if you don't know Beaujolais, it's a Gamay grape. Um, should be raspberry cherry flavours um, with some good texture and uh, smoothness on the palate. Oh, wow. And, and how much, where did you pick this up from? Pick this at Dan's, I think for about $40. $40. It's been a while now. It's been sitting in my wine fridge for a while, but I thought... Hang on, let's try this. Forty dollars for a crew must be must be pretty good value. Okay, let's look at it on the eyes. 
Um, definitely a, a lighter red. You can kind of see through it, right? So yeah, lavender, ruby. It, it actually looks... Kind of purplish tinge to it, isn't it? Yes, it, it looks really inviting. And on the nose... What are you smelling there? Let's... Uh... I do get that kind of uh, mm. green, clay, but with the, you know, it's like kind of, um, it's not kind of fruit forward fruits. It's like more, I don't know, it's like earthy fruits or something like that. Um, earthy. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I get that. I And I've had this before. I don't know if it was the Beaujolais, but... There's a there's a scent or a, a hint of uh, a scent and a hint. <laughs> it's got a scent. Balsamic vinegar. What's the what's the um, balsamic vinegar syrup? Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, balsamic syrup. Yeah. There's there's a hint of that in there, like a, a slight, not in a not in a bad way, but this slight slight sour. The reason I'm like, you know, getting more less of that sweetness when I think of balsamic uh, syrup, it's more of a kind of savory. Mm. Yes. And that's why I get that. And when I say they're savory, it's that kind of more kind of earthy tones that come through. Yeah. All right. Let's give this a taste uh, and see what it's like. It definitely smells complex though, right? Mm. Oh, nice I tannins. Love, love tannins. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like the the moment I made that mmm sound, it's like when I talk to my wife. I mean, um, <laughs> what are you laughing for? It just uh, I just like mm, she's she's beautiful, and uh, and that's this wine. I think the wine's beautiful. I'm enjoying it, and I enjoyed I enjoyed the tannins, the the flavor profile of it. I got to have more. It has a bit of a kind of greeniness to it for me, which adds that kind of interesting notes around the herbaceous aspect. Mm. So maybe you put some stems in there, but then still has that fruit, has the textures. Uh, it's quite nice with the tannins as well. But maybe we should try it with the uh, the food. That's a delicious wine on its own, I'm telling you. And perfect for an Aussie Christmas because of the summer heat. Mm. Something light. So what, what did you have? You had the chicken? chicken. All right, the Trent chicken, always super moist. Mmm, and herby. I feel like it will work straight up. Mm. Without having it together, I can imagine. You're right, that herbiness of the, um, the Beaujolais. Mm. Mm. Those are that chicken. Yeah, and, yeah, the, and the fruity characters. Like, mm. Really complements the flavours. Yeah. I think that works. Yeah, I like that. Absolutely. Mm. Well done. Okay. So, ham? I've had that. Let's go to the glazed sweet ham. Uh, and see how that pairs with the Beaujolais. Mm. Okay. Nice kind of maple flavors. Mmm. You've done well. You are a chef here. Not as well as the chicken. But doesn't clash like the Bionia as well. I don't know. I actually prefer that. I actually prefer that pairing Enjoying. with the ham. The, there's something about the sweetness and the fruitness coming and the fruit coming together. The fruitness. And <laughs> that's also a Christmas term. It only comes out during Christmas. But but to me, it works together. This is a good choice. Wow! Ooh. And for forty bucks on a Christmas celebration, having a bit of friends. It feels like it's Christmas. That's yeah. Arrived early. Well done. Okay, let's go corkscrew ratings. Look, you chose this one. Ooh, ooh, it's a hard choice. I, I like them both. Um, I'm tossing between a seven and an eight. Eight has to be special. I, I'm giving this a seven out of ten. I think they both. It works well with both the ham, yeah, and the chicken. It'll probably work well with the prawns. I'm assuming. Uh, but as, as well as a wine on its own, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. What, what do you think? Eight out, eight out of ten for me. Eight out of it? ten. Well done. Yeah, I love how from the previous project that we had, like this one has just so many different more layers to it that kind of works with the herbiness of the chicken and then, yeah, kind of like kind of pair, pair, pairs off that kind of sweetness of the ham. But um, 
Yeah, I just just wine by itself as well has just been. It's been yeah, it's delicious. I like the look. I like the scent. Mm. It's it's awesome. Yeah. Okay, well done. And so we have a bonus round here. Is that what you've introduced? Bonus round. So what is this, Trent? So Christmas will be Christmas without um, some mulled wine. So if you don't know what mulled wine is, it's generally kind of red wine. Um, you can use. Uh, I think Grenache or more kind of more fruity wines. Um, I use a, a Cabernet Sauvignon. I've got a, a $15 Wins Kunawara. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah, Cab Sav. Yeah. But what you infuse into it is uh, orange zest, oranges, cinnamon, cloves, star anise, cardamom pods mm. into it with a bit of um, apple cider vinegar, which is the recipe that I used. Um, let it boil up, let it simmer for about 30 minutes and see how it goes for me i remember um in london kind of walking through the christmas markets there and then just having that smell of kind of mulled wine coming through and mm. this made me think about christmas i thought for the christmas episode why don't we try some mulled wine as well yeah why not well done and, and thanks i i didn't know how it was put together i had a bit of a sniff while yeah. you were while you were talking yeah. through that there. there's oh, a lot and a bit of honey and a bit of honey as oh, well there's a lot of layers in this and i could I could smell the complexity that that's coming through because you're adding that cinnamon and so forth. And the balsamic, the, the vinegar, sorry, the vinegar yeah. comes through as well. You just had a taste. Are you loving it? I probably got to pad down a bit more on the vinegar, but it does kind of cut through a bit of the kind of mm. rich, richness of it. But it does smell like Christmas, just tastes like Christmas to me as well. I just love that smell of cloves, um, uh, cinnamon, you know, those kind of dried fruits kind of coming through. It's like, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, the uh, the vinegar, vinegar, I agree. Um, but also the citrus and the orange is coming through, mm. which is delicious. It's really interesting because coming from Australia, I don't think mulled wine is a common thing yeah. in Australia because it's so hot here. Right? Yeah. It, to me, it reminds me of, a, of something you're having in winter by yeah. the snow. Um, it's a great thing though when it's like freezing cold outside. Yes. Then you yes. have that nice warm mulled wine. It's like this kind of warm hug they kind of get. Yeah, absolutely. It's awesome. But but as as it's going down, um, it's warming up the body. Life is good, and that's what that's what Christmas is about. The only thing I didn't put into it, they say, is I also add some brandy into it as well. <laughs> <laughs> Which be, is a very Christmas thing as well. It's a very it. Christmas thing, but you have a bit of brandy, you're dating yeah, your cousin, yeah. the next thing, you, you don't know what's going on. That's uh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right, so there we go. That's, that's a couple of wines that we've tried for Christmas 2023. Trent, thank you so much for this gift. That's right. Thank you for cooking this amazing meal. You're always a great host. Appreciate the wines that you've bought through. Really love the Beaujolais, and uh, I think we, it's a uh, reason to have more. Mm. Uh, and and I hope I hope everyone's having a fantastic celebration here. We're about to pop these bonbons in front of us and see what we get. But before that, Trent, did you have any last words? Um, I think just you know, uh, look after your family, spend uh, good time with family, good food, good wine, good everything. Yeah, so just cherish cherish those moments. Perfect. All right, so let's let's give this a crack. It's a special bonbon. Merry Christmas, twenty twenty three. Here we go. Oh, Trent got everything. Yeah. I'm I, hoping it's the wine tea towels. I get a piece of metal. <laughs> well, what is that? You, you got to explain what that is. I don't know what that is. So it's it's probably a key ring and a keychain. Yeah. Awesome. But look, cool. from us at the wind up, we hope you all enjoy your Christmas. Um, happy, Merry Christmas to all. I hope you have a great time with your family. And as we like to say here, drink, drink more, try more, learn more. more. Thanks all. See ya. Bye. Merry Christmas. <laughs>